see, but when it be done, I see myself on the TV, I'm unimpressed. You think you love me, but I don't love me enough. Wow, wow. first episode of Muffy and Company where we're going to be doing interviews with Jairus J. So I want to introduce to some and present to others Jairus. Jairus is a childhood friend of mine, um, military brat that moved to my hometown, our hometown, Little School, Elementary, elementary School, Kane Hoy. Elementary, middle schools, give it up for Keno, a huge Wando area. But yeah, I met Jairus all those years ago, and she has always, always, always been such a righteous person. Like I remember saying to Jairus all the time, like, "Oh my gosh, you're so, you're such a good girl." And we're both pre PKs, preachers kids. And Jairus was always the good one out of all of us. Me, Lamar, Jairus, Lisa, all of us used to hang out. She was always the good one and I always admired her for that. But then years later, she's now this entrepreneur and businesswoman and college graduate and all of this great stuff. And I see that she's human just like the rest of us. So Jairus, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. Are you sure? Really though, how are you? I am definitely in a like transition in my life. Like I'm really trying to like just understand like my purpose in life. Really understand like why am I here? Like I know why I'm here, but it's like really why? Like yeah. right, right. Like why am I here? Like just really just trying to find that balance. Priorities. I'm just trying to get my life. <laughs> Aren't we all together? I think, I think we all are. I can agree that we all are. So, Jairus, if I were to ask you, who are you? Who in the world are you? What would you say? How would you answer that question? I would say that I am hope and encouragement for somebody and I say that because I've always been that like go-to person like I need advice I need help can you go with me here go with me, th go with me there so I feel like I'm that person I just yeah. Hey. That's a deep question. It's a lot. It's a lot to unpack now. When somebody asks you, who in the world are you? That's 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 a lot. A lot. I, it's so many ways you can answer it. I'm somebody's future. Okay. White. God. <laughs> Somebody's future. I, I know for a fact I am a leader, mm -hmm. um, like a youth leader in church, but I even feel like even when it comes to entrepreneurship, I feel like I'll be that leader for the youth to help them understand that, hey, whatever you want to do, you can do it. Um, you just have to be, for one, around the right people. I can talk to you about how to get your life financially. Hi, how are you? All right, y'all, y'all gonna have to excuse us. We are currently about to rub down on some good black owned soul food. We are currently at Kiki's Chicken and Waffles, located in Columbia, South Carolina, black owned restaurant. I've been here once. You've been here? I've been here once. Once. So, um, y'all gotta excuse us. We keep cutting and coming back, cutting and coming back. But we were at, who are you? Oh, so you, 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 you feel good with your answer or you want to unpack a little bit more? How you, how you feeling? Yeah, I, was, yeah, I, was, I, I feel like, okay, I am somebody's leader. I'm somebody's hope. I'm somebody's encouragement. I'm just, yeah. I'm looking at Jairus in the playback camera in case y'all wondering why I ain't. You know, I'm, I'm looking at her in the playback. But, well, let's start off Jairus with, some basic questions and then hopefully by the end of the session right we might can answer that for you okay so tell the people a little bit about what you do as far as your business like I said she is an entrepreneur she is a businesswoman so in that aspect of who you are tell them what you do 
So I am a photographer. Actually, the 18th of this month will make one year that I've been in business. Um, so I do that. I do graphic tees. Thank, thank you. No um, I do really nice graphic designs. Jerry's J designs, honey. Yes. I'm so humble. <laughs> She is very humble, but I'll tag her uh, Instagram handle, which will have her website, and y'all can see all of the amazing things she's creating. And you will know that she is being very humble because Jerry's J Designs ain't no joke, honey. Oh my God. It's your ministry. Now go ahead. We're we'll telling the people glory. what else you do. <laughs> so the graphic tees, um, I do. I used to sew masks when the pandemic first started, mm -hmm. but now I got you if need be. But other than that, um, I design masks, bling shoes, really anything in the creative bracket, that's me. But mainly it is really graphic tees and photography is what I've really been seeing a lot more revenue coming in. I made a lot more clientele. But I'm starting to notice photography, I think it's gonna be that. that it's gonna hold the most weight. That's yeah. what you, okay. Yes. Okay, so when you when you do serve the people with the photography and the graphic tees, what do you see You um, people come to you the most for? Is it the graphic tees or is it the photos? I would say right now, it's been like, it's really been like 50-50. Okay. Like, it's, like there might be like I say 50% is I want shirts I want masks the other 50 is like I want pictures and then in between that 50 50 it's like I want the shirt and a photo shoot some people I'll make them a shirt for their photo shoot okay and so when you, when you do the graphic tees because I know on your website you have some that you created mm -hmm. and made yourself that you sell but do you do personalized like can people come to you and tell you what they want their shirt to say and then you oh yes okay uh, I am all when I say I am all for I got some tea. stuff I want on the shirt. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I already sipped tea. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, if if you want anything custom, definitely just let me know. And I am the type of business owner to where if I can't provide that particular design for you, I will definitely refer you to another trustworthy business owner. Like I love to support everybody exactly like put other people on other businesses on that's that's the way to be Definitely. that's how you serve the people that's how you serve we people. here for the people that's how you serve the people we here for the people all right now Jess, what where did this passion and desire for photography and personal lives graphic tees where did that come from when did it come i would say my parents said I was about three years old. Um, they said I was always the kid that I was always trying to create stuff. I always loved to be in front of the camera. I used to have little fake photo shoots when I was a little girl. I used to be like, Mommy, Daddy, Daddy, bring the camera. And they be like, Okay. She, that, and I've just always been a arts and crafts type person. So I would say it started at three, but my, but I'm pretty sure it was probably a little before then. Okay. But I would say three is when it was like, bam. Okay. And so then you brought up your parents, your lovely, beautiful parents. Who I just you. think the world of. Girl, they love you so much. <laughs> Mama asked me at least once a month. How's what you doing? I love you. When I say her mama, the most, the prettiest bald lady I know, and I say that with the utmost respect because that's why I can cut my hair. When I say I can cut my hair and feel like I'm bold and beautiful, her mother has definitely inspired that throughout the years. But since you brought up your parents, let the people know a little bit about your upbringing and how, how did you grow up and so, that impact that it has had on who you are as an adult. So I must say my childhood was like the best like the best ever like i've always had like my parents have always been 10 toes down like they are they've always have been and are like my number one support my number one cheerleaders and they will let me know straight up mm. <laughs> i think you might need to reconsider go back right, and right. pray and reconsider that but overall like i've always had a fun childhood like 
my parents have always been loving like they were all about quality time very affectionate so that's probably why i am only child right yeah like the people need to know that yeah. only child <laughs> yes no no siblings but Growing up, you know, our house was a hangout spot, so it was always, oh, I'm going to Mr. Minscom Johnson house. I, was, I used to be like, okay, can I have my parents back? <laughs> That's how them only child be. I have a child, and she is the only. So they could be a little selfish with their mamas and their daddies. Just a little can. bit. Just, 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 just a, a little, little bit. bit. Just a little bit. But one thing I, I do love, like, I feel like, there is that stigma that okay you're only child so you're spoiled rotten and you're like a complete brat okay i was i am spoiled but my mom and daddy would tear that behind up exactly if need be but i wasn't i wasn't raised to be selfish but i was raised to understand that jairus does come first but it, at the end of the day it's not all about you right so i think as i got older i still be selfish sometimes i'm like <laughs> Okay, um, it's only me. What am I doing? But I've always been a giver and I've always seen my parents give. Exactly. So I think giving for me is nothing. Like, it's just the. Uh, I'm gonna just do it. And I don't do it with the intent that, like, oh, I know it's gonna be reciprocated. I know I'm gonna get it back. I mean, I know I will, but I don't think about it like that. Because I'm like, somebody always. There's somebody that always has it is in a much more challenging situation than you are. And I think sometimes we have to put us out of the equation and understand that there, this person is in need and it's not even all, always tangible. Somebody could just need a phone call to say, I just was checking on you. And that could mean the world to them. Right. So, yeah, I'm very affectionate and mushy, but I be saying I'm a thug and stuff, but if you hey, know me- that's the thug about Jerry, y'all. <laughs> Sweeter than honey. But, but I can turn into them. if provoked, but that's that's not too often, okay, y'all. <laughs> okay, so now a little bit deeper into the upbringing. Like we said in the introduction, she is a PK, so that means you grew up in church, like most of us did in that area where we grew up, out in the country. So how has that impacted the woman that you are now, growing up in church and having that influence at a young age? So I honestly say I actually enjoy being a PK I guess because my parents didn't have that mindset that that like okay because you're in God that you don't have a life like I wasn't for me personally I wasn't a sheltered PK I had a life but I knew as I got older there's just certain stuff I'm just not gonna do right and it, it didn't have anything to do with my parents it's just because like I just don't want to do it that's not what I believe but I mean Spiritually speaking, like, shoot, we, every now and then we would listen to our little whoever, MJ Fantasia, Jasmine Sullivan, Jasmine Sullivan, Chrisette Michelle, and I'm oh, naming my these people Chrisette because these Jones. are people that she has put me on. I love remember them. in high school, she, you listen to that new Jasmine Sullivan, you heard that new Chrisette I used to get on her for that Jasmine Sullivan oh, song. Okay. And my mama loved um, <laughs> Chrisette and um, John Legend. So, love them too. Love but, them too. yeah, but I just think that like, Spiritually speaking, I like I always knew there was a God. I always knew, you know, what it was. Mm -hmm. Like from a spiritual aspect, I was in church, but my parents, we weren't in church like seven days a week. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. Thank you. We're gonna say this grace. Put that chicken down. I was about to <laughs> PK. I almost forget the prayer. I forget God made the chicken. So again, y'all, we are at Kiki's Chicken and Waffles. Take a look at that. All right. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for traveling grace and mercy that got us here safely, God. We ask that you bless the food that we are about to receive. Let it be nourishment to our mind, bodies, and soul, God. Bless the hands that prepared it, God. And lastly, God, bless this fellowship, God. Bless this fellowship so that it can give and inspire and motivate and do what it is meant to do for the viewers who are watching. We thank you for all that you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we are coming. We gonna eat and continue with these interviews. Where were we? Um, the PK line. Yeah, being a PK, preacher's kid. 
my life was, was my pre-k life was dope i'm not gonna lie i still had a life like yeah. i still gotta do what i want to do let me let me rephrase do what i want to do um there was limitations to doing what i wanted to do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Still, you know, I'm the average teenager. You know, you go out to your little parties, your little sleepovers if, if your parents and trust you with the parents. Mm -hmm. And but other than that, I just feel like as I got older, I I, I started running out a little bit <laughs> when it when it came to the room. I think we all did the situationships. Cause I don't even want to call them relationships. Sneaking every now and then. Trying to be of the world, knowing good and well we wasn't raised to be of the world at all. And the funny thing about it is, it's crazy how like, like I tried to do all of that, but even in high school, contestants would be like, "Now, Jared, that now you. you." She was always better than the rest of us. I mean, no shame even admitting that when somebody is on the level that you just on Art Jairus has always been on the level spiritually that I just wasn't. I just wasn't there yet. I had to. I had to learn the hard way. I, I sometimes I learn now the hard way. Contessa, Megan, Lamar, all of them used to be like, now Jairus, you, now, now you, I used to, they used to be like, well, I'm gonna go such and such. I'd be like, I coming too. No, you're not. So we like, so what's the difference? Years, we used to have so much fun in high school, man. When I say laugh, y'all, we couldn't take nothing seriously. We couldn't take nothing seriously. Lamar, if you are watching this, we love you and we miss you. I, I thank you so much, cousin, for all the laughs. Cause you and Jairus, I used to do. Oh, so if at one time when we um, what 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 class? Oh, we had English class together, <laughs> and I used to make I used to get on our English teacher nerves. So I used to do this little Hi, vibrate sound. <laughs> So I used to do this slow. So every time we took the test, mm -hmm. Contessa used, used to be like, Jairus, do the sound, man, do the sound. So I used to make this sound to make it seem like somebody foaming, vibrating. And, and this one was fleeting. Do the sound, Jairus, do the sound. Let me see how y'all was fleeting used to do. Mm. <laughs> Class be quiet, this be. Mm. Mm. All right, guys, I'm not gonna tell you again. Turn the phones off. You're not even supposed to be having them. Miss Clayton, they ain't even no phone. Oh my gosh, we used to die laughing. Five minutes later. Do them again, do them again. <laughs> this me. Pass me the syrup. <laughs> this me. <laughs> and all you see is all you see is nothing but teeth. This one's dying. Dying, dying like, laughing. You know what? Jairus and the others who we hung out with in high school will never. Words can't even describe how much they impacted my life then. My dad had just died at 14, and school was literally my escape. They didn't know that. School was my escape, school was my life, because all of my siblings were older than me. So they were like my sisters and my brothers. I used to have a ball in school. I did not just go to learn. This whole learning and healing, and I always been on it. I just wanted to laugh and survive. And they helped me to do that. Yes, they what? did. Yes, y'all did, Jerry. I swear y'all did. Girl, I just want to make sure everybody been okay. <laughs> and I had just want to offer a snack of a lollipop. <laughs> some wings. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, so the next question is, the next one. I nervous. When are you most yourself? What does that look like? What are you doing? When do you feel most yourself? Mm. I would really say when I feel like like my most myself. Mm -hmm. I feel like I guess sometimes I guess now more than ever it's those me time moments. Like, cause I used to always be the person. I'm gonna go hang out here. I'm gonna go hang out here. I'm gonna go hang out here. Extrovert. I'm 100% extrovert. <laughs> but I have my introvert moments now that I'm getting older, and I understand that you you can still be around a crowd of people and still be miserable. And that that was me. So I feel like my where I'm most myself when I'm at home with my big old t-shirt on, mm -hmm. laughing at myself. I think I'm pretty funny sometimes. So. Mm -hmm. mm. I hear that. Just being able to like relax, watch a different world, mm. and cause you show. Mm -hmm. My wife, kids, 
I like Sanford and Sun Juno. <laughs> I just feel like those, those are like my, when I'm most myself. And I feel like when I'm around my friends, because I'm the same goofy, like there's not really levels to my goofiness. It's literally, pull up. Anybody can get it. Literally. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay. Anybody. So what is your purpose? What is your purpose? My, so I, okay, so, let me tell y'all real quick. So my mint, so I just um, got a mentor, and this is her assignment for me. Like, our, her whole assignment is for me to find my purpose. Mm. So you're working on it? Mm-hmm. Do you have a hint of an idea, or what God is calling you to do, or what? I know for a fact, I'm calling to the youth. There is no if, ands, or buts. I've always worked with you. I can't get away from them. Mm -hmm. And they just gravitate. Like, like these babies just come up to me. Like, even at work. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to work in the educational field. Mm -hmm. But I do want to work with you. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how even some of these... I, it's like I always get the kids that were like... Bully, got low self esteem, those are the ones that always gravitate. And I'm like, mm -hmm. now I, I can relate, but I'm just like, what is it that I'm supposed to be doing? It's these you. Because I feel like with them, they've, a lot of them, some of them cut up now, but a lot, but it's always something deeper than that. They don't just exactly. cut up, just cut up. A lot of them just really need love, some affection, attention. Except some of them do, yeah. Some of them do need it behind cut though. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna do it with love. But I would say I, I, I feel like my purpose is with the youth. Is the youth? Is the youth? I agree. I agree. So you know, I definitely agree. Speaking of that, I need her to go ahead and um. This anointing she has with Chris dancing. I'm gonna need her to go ahead and, I don't know if we gotta do Zoom meetings. I don't know if I got to bring my baby to Charlotte once a month. I don't know, but my baby is a dancer. Gifted dancer. She just needs to be skilled. So we gonna set that up with Jerry's. Jerry's Chris dances too. Yes, she does. No more? Okay, my bad. But, but it's, it's the... So next question. What are your gifts and talents? All of them that you can name, what are they? Now you know I'm going to tell all this stuff. <laughs> you know, listen, whatever makes you comfortable, whatever you feel you need to share, so whenever somebody watching us and they feel like they can reach out to you to get through what they're going through or you can help them understand something, that's all we doing. So what are the gifts and talents that you would like for people to know? I do sing a little bit. A little bit. Um, I would say anything in the craft arena. I would say I would say a gift thing, a gift would be like just being able to encourage people. Mm -hmm. Like I, whoever comes to mind, whoever's on my heart, I don't hesitate reaching out, mm -hmm. even if I really don't know you like that. I just do it. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. So serve. Yeah. Serving and helping. Those Serving are and helping. Those yeah. are gifts. Okay. Serving and helping is for just any and everybody. You got to be a certain type of person to be out here serving and helping people. Because uh, I had to learn balance though. Because mm -hmm. with helping, I was at a place where I was that yes person. Mm -hmm. Jared, oh, Jared can do it. Jared can do it. Now, I bet you I know how to say no. Mm -hmm. I just feel like it's all about boundaries. Right. But, I mean, yeah, serving and helping. Okay. I'm trying to think about what else. I don't know how to do hair. I wish I did. How you feel like you are currently living in your purpose? Because you know sometimes we can know what our purpose is. But we don't be aligned with it. We don't be living in it. We don't be doing what we're supposed to be doing in order to fulfill that purpose. So do you feel like you're living in your purpose? A little bit? Not at all? <laughs> I feel like I'm living in it a little bit, but I don't know if like last year when I turned 28 was like the awakening. But I feel like now I'm starting to really 
become more effective and overall consistent because I would start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. And like my apostle, her motto is the hardest thing about getting started is getting started. And that's so true. I, I, I'm getting better. Than I was, because if you know, I was struggling a lot. We all do. We all do. I mean, I think those would be my, yeah, my main. Okay. So, is your career aligned with your purpose and your gifts and your talents? Do you think they incorporate with one another? Mm. I feel like in a way it does because I'm working with children but it's not at the capacity that I know it should be. But I know that it's for me it's greater than that. So I would say yes and no. Yeah, I would say yes, yes and no. You all right over there? Oh, I'm good. Kiki's got me in my feelings. Though. Are you happy? Period. Are you happy? Heck no. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that answer. Jerry, why are you ain't happy? Cause you know, I think it's I guess because I'm really at that place where I'm not fulfilled. So I'm like, just like one moment, I'm be like, okay. Next moment, I'm like, life sucks. Even though I just be being dramatic in that moment. Right. But I feel like I'm not, I have my days. But, uh, I'm gonna say no. Cause I'm not walking in what I'm supposed to be doing fully. Which leaves that, mm -hmm, which leaves that void. So I would say no. Okay. So you, you are aware that it's a process. Okay. That's true. And you are aware that destination happiness is temporary. Well, the happiness. Exactly. It's temporary. So, I want to encourage you, myself, because I do it too, and those watching, to keep in mind that it's not a destination. It's a journey. It's a process. And we have to become emotionally intelligent. What that means is we have to be aware of our emotions, but we also have to keep the strength and the power to not allow our emotions to weigh us and stray us from the end goal. You can be happy and not fulfilled. You can. You don't know how? Doing what you're supposed to be doing to get there. As long as you're working toward that fulfillment, that should make you happy. Really should. That's true too. Well, I have my happy days. We all do. We all do. So, what grounds you? The Lord. <laughs> I already knew that answer. I knew that answer because he grounds me too. You would, got to have something to believe in. Got to. I would definitely say the Lord. Now that I'm really getting to a place where like, I'm really making God my best friend. Like, I'm literally, well for me, I call him Big G. That's where I, I feel it. That's where I am. Making God my best friend. Making him my Beautiful best experience. friend. Beautiful experience. Beautiful experience. Like, just being in prayer, reading my Bible, and not just reading just to read, but read to get an understanding. Like, I'm just, I'm just really in that getting to know me, but getting to know like the God in me that I say I serve. Like, I mean, it's fine and dandy growing up hearing about God, but my parents' relationship with God, not gonna help me. Their prayers will, but 
ultimately I have to do it for myself. So I would say, yeah, it'd be price. Now, next question. What is something that people assume about you? That is completely false. The one thing most people misjudge, misunderstand, misinterpret, and assume about you. What is that thing? Might be a couple things. Mm. I wish I had a lot of one thing that I've mainly heard all my life. But I look at it in a good in a good way, I guess. Growing up and even up until now, a lot of people really think that I'm wealthy financially. Like a lot of people really, really think I got it. But then on the flip side, I'm like, okay, well, God, I thank you in advance. But I'm like, I don't have it like that yet, y'all. People think that um, that I'm just as innocent as can be. I think that. I'm sorry. I'm one of those people. She and her sister. I'm people. You and um, Belma. Yes. But that's a blessing of you, isn't it? That when people see you, they think that. I used to hate it. <laughs> Cause I, I used to want to try to be a little bad. <laughs> it didn't work. She is truly a good girl. Truly, and I believe anybody watching this that has known her, that has experienced her in any capacity, at any level. Cheers, you're a good girl. No, we're not saying you're perfect. No, we're not saying that. Oh yeah, definitely. But there is just a genuineness and a purity about you that even when you want to, even when you try to, even when you made choices that may not have, you're still a good girl. <laughs> I feel pure. <laughs> Anyways, let's move along. What is something that you don't know whether it's a specific thing, whether it's a theory or a subject of life. Um, what is something that you completely just don't know that you're just ignorant and oblivious to that you feel at this point in your life you need to know, you need to learn, you need to research, you need to dig deeper into? I seriously, for real. This, I don't know if I should say it. I kind of feel embarrassed. No, don't be embarrassed. This is a safe place. You're right. I ain't embarrassed no more. Mm -hmm. I feel like I really need to. I don't know if this is really the right answer. I feel like I really need to like dig deeper into Black history because um, I can't believe it all on school because you know my parents taught me a lot of stuff outside of school. But at the same time, some stuff I see, I'm like, that's an amazing answer. They did it. What? Cheers, that's an amazing answer. Like it's, 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 and I hate to cut you off because this is your question, but oh, I gotta okay. put this out there. When when we have been robbed of our history and our power and our strengths and what makes us us for years, for centuries. How could we say we know? How could we not want to know more and learn more and dig deeper? Mm -hmm. I can honestly say I don't know. There are times when I watch certain um, footage on YouTube, certain clips on Instagram, and I'm like, wow, I'm a black woman that did not know that. I didn't. I don't know this person. Mm -hmm. So I'm also going to leave some links in the description of some YouTubers, some YouTube channels, and some people who are now in, impacting my life and influencing me that we can all learn from as far as black history. Because I think a lot of us, that's something a lot of us should want to know and learn more. Mm -hmm. uh, shout, out, shout out to Dr. Travis Nesbitt on his YouTube series. He has taught me and introduced me to a lot of people. I'm like, how do I not know who this person is? Yeah, he be hitting stuff up like. Yes, ma'am, we are. Can I get some more sweet tea? Yeah. So that is definitely uh, one person right right from our area, our hometown, who can help us in that area of doing research and right. learning more about our black history. Okay, now, I do want to say this. Now, one thing I have admired about Quintessa, like, all our life, I feel like I've known about all my life, because <laughs> when I met you, I was like 12. Mm -hmm. I'm about to be 30 next year. That's my whole life. One thing I have loved about Quintessa, 
is her knack for learning and reading. <laughs> Yo, when I tell you I be wanting to read a book so bad, but I be like, hold on, do they have this on YouTube? Do they got a? Do they have an electronic? Do they got an ebook that actually reads the book to me? Cause y'all, I have so many books. I have like over 13 books, and I'm still like halfway on. Majority of them, and it's been about five, ten years. So like, I really do admire like your love for learning and reading. Like, I be trying to open the book. I be trying. That's why. I, that, that's why I just listen to the Bible. Right. But when I have to like teach the youth on a Sunday, I have to actually study and open the Bible. Right. But you knack for learning. You know, I'm a, I'm a challenge myself. Why? Do it. Do it. I, I have, have this energy. I have to finish this book. What's the name of it? It's about the real. Thing. I actually need to start um Cicely Tyson's memoir. When that came out, I, I didn't even look into that one. I should, I should have brought it in you because you read them for me. Exactly. I'll finish it in a week. Probably less than that. I'll finish it probably in 2024. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. But this book is called, um, this is a book that my aunt gave me like a couple years ago and it's really good. It's like um, finding, um, it's like 10 or 12 ways to find um, to find God or something like that. And it's just like ways to help you like to really understand like your purpose in life. But I'll send you the book here, Mom, so I can take a picture of it. But I need to finish that. There's another book called um, Business Boutique. Chris, her name is Christy Wright. And if you've heard of Dave Ramsey, the financial dude, um, she's affiliated with him. So she talks about like being a woman in business, but also being a woman of faith and business. Mm -hmm. And I love how she just applies like all these principles. I need to finish, if anything, I need to finish, no, I finish both of them together. But um, yeah, I'm trying to be like, when it comes to reading and learning, mm -hmm. I just get sleepy. You gotta make a habit out of it. I can't honestly say the more you do it, the more you just sit down and say, let me, let let me read five chapters. All right, let me let me read five more. The more you do it, the more you make a habit out of it. The more you make a habit out of it, the easier it becomes. Honestly, 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 honestly. Now I can write all day long. I got about fifty journals. But I've gotten slack with that too. Girl, all my all my little empty notebooks got a little dust on them. <laughs> so we gonna challenge you to. Make a habit out of reading. I do. Get back to your love of writing and journaling. Cause the journal right next to my bed. All right. So the next question is, what is the most impactful event or experience that you have had in life? The most impactful. I mean, the one that just ignited who you are. I would definitely, oh, I'm confident about this answer. <laughs> so, um, growing up, I went to um, Charity and Eugene, and Reverend uh, Dr. Crystal Sears was the pastor, who really, she, her husband, and her whole family, they really helped, you know, a lot of my parents helped mold some of these things. Thank you, no that I was called to do. But every year, omitted oh, when the pandemic hit, I used to go to conferences with the AME conferences three times a year and I would do interviews with like I would interview like gospel singers I would be the, one of the photographers on set I would learn about you know cameras and lighting and I feel like those were the most impactful because it was just amazing for one to see the amount of youth that are excited about these things every year but two I really think that's when the gift of photography was really birthed out per se. It was always there, but I just feel like it was just, that's when it really started because I knew for a fact I was going to do something I love every year for a couple of months. And I just, and they're just good people. The Sears fight, they ride or die, can't get in. <laughs> well, but I shout out to the Sears. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like that's that's really when it's it started. So that impacted you, who you are as a person. Yeah, okay. I mean, definitely along with my parents because for one, they allow me to always be with them. So shout out to my parents for sure. Um, 
But yeah, going to those conferences were amazing. And it's actually starting back up this year. I'm going to one next month. So, yeah. All right, all right. Now this is the last question, okay? Dun, dun, dun. This is the world, okay? If you could leave the world, with one piece of your own advice, not no cliche that we didn't hear it all throughout our years on earth, but if you can leave the world with your very own advice, what advice would that be? Mm. I think I got two of them. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do one. Um, but it, it's a cliche though, it's like a saying. Mm. Paraphrase, dig deep with it. Okay. I would definitely say embrace who you are. So you, I know we all know saying be yourself. We all know that, but I really say embrace who you are because there really is not another you. There may be somebody else in this world with your name, but they are not you. Like I say embrace who you are just because like you be surprised what's in you that hasn't even unfolded yet. You would be surprised that the people that are watching you, you don't even know it. You would be surprised how amazing you are when you just come to the realization of how amazing you are. I know that has sound messed up. No, but it didn't. So sound perfect to me. It's like when you really just understand that like you have a purpose in life and when you come to grips with that and you don't let anybody take that and from you. Accept it and accept it. Accept and it. work in alignment. I'm sorry, this is your question. No, but, and no, I was getting it and work in alignment with it. And don't let anybody talk you out of who you are or allow you to or allow them to change who you are. It's that whole embrace yourself for me. Literally. Because when you even with embracing yourself, it's like you get to the point to where you know who you are. To where you can walk in a room full of people doing the exact same thing that you do. But you already know listen okay we do the same thing but i'm not intimidated i i know what i bring to the table absolutely we bring the same thing to the table but it's not what i do absolutely it's in the same bracket but it's, it's still not me i mean it's still not you so i would definitely say and just embrace embrace you because at the end of the day when you when you go on you're going by yourself the real you, the authentic you, not not the you that mommy and daddy wants you to be, not the you no. that social media influences you to be, not the you that wants to be like your best friend, not the you that wants to be just like your role model, the you that God says you are. And that's on Mary Had a Little Lamb. And that's on Mary Had a Little Lamb. So Jerry, that's 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 it for my question. That's. That's really it. And that if, you, if you are still watching, I challenge you to comment, give us feedback, like, share, subscribe, give us suggestions, challenge anything that we said, just dialogue with us. Let's just get in the habit of being a people who are not afraid to share, express, question. Let's be authentically ourselves and serve and help and support one another. Let's 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 do that. So again, share it, like it, subscribe to the channel, tag along for the ride, gain something, teach somebody else something that you might have learned or something that you might have been reminded of. Okay, and Jerry's. I, I think I lied because I said that was the last question. Girl, I already knew. I want to ask you one more thing. How do you feel? How do you feel about the, the, the fellowship, the experience today with Muffy and company and the interviews? Well, you for one, you know I love, I have to get the gas. <laughs> I love the dialogue. And I can talk to Muff all day. <laughs> like all day. Cause she, one, one thing I know about anybody we went to school with, if you want somebody to pick your brain, she the one. I mean, I she gonna pick, pluck, scoop. I want all the good stuff. <laughs> so I can she give it to everything. Yes. 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 
and yes. <laughs> I feel good and and I just and I for one I was just excited that she even asked me I was like gosh you really are you know when I send out the invitation and I invite people to be a guest on my show one of the main things that you will see is impact influence right main two words you're going to see in that invitation and so when i say the people that i invite whether it was just for a split second of my life or whether it was for decades <laughs> of my life we ain't that old but we hitting on 30. oh my god <laughs> yes we are but it don't matter if it was for a split second or if it was for years if you have impacted or influenced my life in any way you can expect to get an invitation to be on the show because you know people like to say i'm self-made and good yep. i'm self-made and i got it out the mud but the devil is a lie all of us need someone all of us is influenced by people family friends teachers all of us need support hold on now you are the fourth person real quick i'm sorry so my pastor, she's been talking about influence. My One of my sisters, she preached about influence. This morning, my apostle preached about influence and impact this morning. And you number four. That's confirmation. When you work in alignment, and as you said, embrace yourself. Work in alignment with who you are. Who God says you are. He will show up with signs and wonders. He will confirm what you feel. He will confirm what he wants you to believe. He will confirm what he needs you to know. Don't sleep on God, man. I, it's, there's so much I can say. But the, but the point is, we all need someone. And I just want to be someone that's needed. I want to be someone that's wanted because the people who come on this show are people who I Needed. At some point in my life, there are people who I want to be a part of my life and a part of my ministry. I can't do it by myself. You cannot do it by yourself. Don't you think for one second, oh, I get it out the mind, I'm self-made, I don't need nobody. No, that's that's the enemy. Those are thoughts that you need to just get out your head and throw it away. You need somebody. I need somebody. Jairus needs somebody. We might as well just work in alignment with who we are supposed to be and what we're supposed to be doing for as long as we need to be doing it. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I thank y'all for watching and tuning in. Stay tuned for the next episode. Like, comment, share, subscribe again, again, again. I'm going to keep telling y'all again, 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 and again. If you want to be a guest on the show, you can reach me on my Instagram. All of that will be provided for you in the description on the intro, on the outro. Y'all be blessed and thank you for watching Mafia and Company. First episode of the revamp. Cheers, thank you so much. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow.